Welcome to Mr. Hominick's AP Language and Composition course. In this lesson, we are going to cover an introduction to The Scarlet Letter, a novel by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Nathaniel Hawthorne was born July 4th, 1804 in Salem, Massachusetts. He was a recluse, often spending time quietly to himself, and even when he was among others, he would spend much of his time observing their behaviors, especially his young daughter, Una. He wrote Twice Told Tales, The House of Seven Gables, The Scarlet Letter, and much, much more. Some of his most famous short stories are The Birthmark and The Minister's Black Fell. He was married to Sophia Peabody, and he fathered Una, his only child. He died in 1864, and he was buried in Concord, Massachusetts. And his great-great-grandfather, coincidentally, was John Hawthorne, who was a judge at the Salem Witch Trials. Now, you will remember Judge Hawthorne from our reading of The Crucible, who was a major character in that play. In this section, we'll cover the background information to the novel The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. The novel is set in the mid-1600s in Boston, Massachusetts. The plot encompasses a seven-year period, so as we read, be sure to look for those clues, because they are subtle at times, of how the author transitions chronologically from one time period to the next. The plot involves a love triangle between a wife, lover, and husband. The following are the major themes in the novel, which we all need to look for and take note of when we encounter them. Sin, knowledge, and human nature. Nature of evil, identity in society, and alienation. Background information continued. The motifs throughout, the reoccurring images, symbols, and ideas uh, that occur throughout the novel are civilization versus wilderness, night versus day, and the characters' names. It's important to, as we encounter each of these motifs, to track them, look for repetition, right? Use the analytical voice chart to look for relationships, uh, incongruities, juxtapositions, repetitions, uh, contrasts, etc. And track them and see how the author develops them throughout the novel. Then we have our symbols, Right, we have the scarlet letter A that we'll see quite often, the meteor pearl, which is Hester Prynne's daughter, and the rose bush, which we'll see even in chapter one. So make sure that you're tracking these and taking notes using those sticky note cards to identify these as they will be important for the test and for the essay. So in this section, we want to review what is Puritanism, right? We've covered this a little bit, but we'll go a little more in depth. But Puritan beliefs, right? They had an emphasis on the private study of the Bible. It was up to the individual to know the Bible and know uh, God's message contained therein. They had a desire to see education and enlightenment for the masses, especially so they could read the Bible for themselves and not get the message conveyed to them by a priest only. They also believed in the simplicity of worship, the exclusion of vestments or religious garments, religious images, candles, etc. Maybe that's why John Proctor had a problem with those golden candlesticks. Puritans also did not celebrate traditional holidays, which they believed were in violation of the regulative principles of worship. Further, Puritans believed that the Sabbath was still obligatory to Christians, although they believed the Sabbath had been changed to Sunday. In the uh, Jewish tradition, the Sabbath is held and observed on Saturday. Many Puritans approved of the church's involve involvement with the courts. And again, I recall, what was that type of government that the Puritans had, especially in Salem? Right, It was a theocratic society, a society set up around 
the law of their belief system, their religion. Again, the Bible is the supreme authority on earth, and man is worthless, and God is the only one that can save him. And so man is in need of redemption. Moving back to the structure and specifics of the novel, The Scarlet Letter, it's important that we understand the point of view, right? This is the uh, framework or the view that we as the reader have into the narrative. Now, the view for The Scarlet Letter is third person omniscient, right? Omni meaning all, uh, you know, science, the root word, shant mean knowledge, so all knowing. Um, there is no limit to what the reader knows. Uh, we hear the inner thoughts of all the characters. We see every angle possible. The main characters that we'll be reading about in the book, our protagonist is, is Hester Prynne, and she is the wearer of the Scarlet Letter. Pearl is the child of Hester, and she is a living symbol of Hester's sin. Roger Chillingworth is a learned scholar and doctor. Arthur Dimsdale is an admired young minister. Governor Bellingham is the governor and magistrate of Massachusetts Bay Colony. Reverend John Wilson is a senior minister of the colony. And Mistress Hibbins is Governor Billingham's sister. A major focus in our study of the Scarlet Letter will be on symbols, so I want to revisit those. The first symbol to notice is the Scarlet Letter. The letter's meaning shifts as time passes. Originally, right, the Scarlet Letter is intended to mark Hester as an adulterer, and the A morphs into other meanings. And so your job as the reader throughout this study will be to determine what will it come to symbolize next and what will be its final uh, meaning uh, and its final embodiment in the symbol. Um, the next is Meteor. Uh, as Dimsdale stands on the scaffold with Hester and Pearl in chapter 12, a meteor traces out an A in the night sky. To Dimsdale, the meteor implies one thing, and again, it's your job as the student reader to figure out what that is. But it is interpreted differently by the rest of the community. And that's also your job to figure out how they interpret it. And that's the power of this story. And that's the power of language and symbols that we're going to study throughout this unit in our reading of the Scarlet Letter. Is how do symbols change based on personal experience or based on perception? based on ideology, based on beliefs. And this novel does a great job at, at, at asking those questions and providing us uh, with even better questions to that idea and that problem of symbols and what they really mean. More symbols revisited. We have Pearl. Although Pearl is a complex character, her primary function within the novel is as a symbol. Pearl is a living version of her mother's scarlet letter. She is the physical consequence of sexual sin. And finally, another powerful symbol is the rose bush. The rose bush symbolizes the ability of nature to endure and outlast man's activities. Hmm. Where have we heard that before? Romanticism? Maybe, perhaps, I don't know. Further, the rose bush symbolizes the perennial nature and power of ideas. So again, as we read through this novel, find these symbols, find other manifestations of these symbols throughout the text, and again, look for relationships, contrasts, repetition, juxtaposition, the incongruity of these symbols. Um, how are they connected? What characters are they connected to? Uh, what larger themes are they connected to? Very important to identify those aspects of these symbols. 
We will be beginning with chapter one. However, there is a prologue that we are going to skip, and that is entitled The Custom House, right? A prologue is a text that comes before the main body of the work. But the prologue in the introduction of the Scarlet Letter is called The Custom House. In it, we learn a few things. One, the narrator is nameless, but he resembles Hawthorne. The narrator is a chief executive officer of a custom house in Salem. Now, customs were taxes paid on foreign imports into Salem. A customs house, right, is a building where people came to pay the taxes. So when they brought goods in from other countries like Europe, they would have to pay a tax before those items entered into, uh, you know, the merchants to be sold. They had to pay a tax. The narrator, right, works in the custom house. And he's bored because few people come to Salem now. And many of his colleagues are much older than he is. He's a young man. So he feels a sense of alienation. He's quite removed from them, observing them. And one day, as he moseys up into the attic of the custom house where nobody ever goes, he finds a bundle with a scarlet and gold A embroidered on it. Um, and within that bundle, he finds a manuscript. Um, and in the Custom House prologue, it said, he says that when he holds the A to his chest, it appears to burn him. So that he feels immediately some connection uh, between this embroidered scarlet letter A as the narrator looks at the bundle and the manuscript, he finds that it's written by a man named John Pugh about an incident that occurred a hundred years before the narrator's time as a surveyor of the custom house. So the narrator essentially rewrites the tell that he reads in that manuscript, which becomes what the reader is reading, what will be reading. So this prologue sets up what's called a frame narrative. Well, what is a frame narrative? A frame narrative is a literary technique that sometimes serves as a story within a story. Now, it's not an allegory, but it's an introductory or main narrative that is presented, um, and it's a list in part for the purpose of setting up the stage either for a more emphasized second narrative or for a set of shorter stories. But the frame story leads readers from the first story into another, smaller, or several ones within it. And actually it can open up into a bigger story, as we'll see. So we have, right, the narrator in the customs house. He finds the manuscript. He finds the embroidered letter A. He feels a connection to it, and we'll talk about that more in depth as we move along. And then he begins to tell the story. So, other examples of frame narratives that you might have heard of, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, The Odyssey by Homer, American Pastoral by Philip Roth, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, and 1001 Nights, or as they're known to Arabian Nights. The end. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to watch again and take down any information you may have missed in your notes. You will be tested on this information.